Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon and you are watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of this evening's news here. And it's some of these things that we're going to basically be bringing to you are a repeat of things that we have spoken about already in the past, but the time is nearing. We are getting closer and closer daily to the event of Pope Francis, his visit to the United States uh, on September, uh, beginning on September the uh, 22nd when he arrives from Cuba at Anderson, uh, excuse me, Andrews Air Force Base uh, in Washington, D.C. And uh, it'll be the following morning at 9.15 a.m. where he'll be uh, welcome a ceremony, a meeting with the President Obama at the White House will be that meeting there, meeting the nation's leader. And so many things are going to transpire as a result of the meetings for the next few days after that. Uh, on, the, on the September the 24th, uh, at 9.20 a.m. again, he will address a joint session of Congress, and then uh, he will then fly to New York after uh, he does this conference. Of course, many different uh, charitable meetings that he will be doing during his visit there, different churches that he will be visiting, etc. cetera. Uh, but then at 8.30 a.m. on Friday, September 25th, he visits the United Nations, addresses the, the United Nations Joint, uh, excuse me, the United Nations General Assembly, there and you know surprisingly Alex Jones has actually got on this bandwagon and, and has really begun to recognize that Pope Francis is definitely the man that is bringing the the new world order agenda in he has recognized that uh, that he is the evil man of sin uh, no doubt now he has not gotten so much in the biblical debate regarding this uh, but you know I was quite shocked that he did it, and he even takes and flies to Rome. Well, we've been to Rome as well uh, and have done uh, video footage there inside Vatican City as well as just outside the very gates there of the, the Vatican Square there uh, revealing who the Pope of Rome really is. And uh, we have seen over and over the different things that, that he is doing that clearly identifies who Pope Francis really is. Not many people want to admit that he is the Antichrist. Uh, many people say that he's the false prophet. I agree that he's both one and the same. He's both false prophet and Antichristo. And I know there's different opinions. People say the Antichrist is against Christ, and they say he's not against him. Well, in principle, he's against Christ as well. He's not just Antichristo, not just a replacement of of, of the, the king of Israel, Yahshua. He is also uh, very much uh, claims to be in place of Christ on earth, uh, the anointed one on earth, which is nothing but a false or a pseudo Christ. And we're going to look at some of the biblical passages regarding this here in just a few moments. But, um, but I wanted to uh, bring this to your attention again because I do believe, and I am in agreement with Alex Jones on this, that he is definitely to bring about the New World Order. Now, that's normally called an NWO. I like to call it the NWCO, the New World Catholic Order, that he'll be bringing about. He is also for a one world religion. He is for a one world currency, uh, for a one world monetary system. Everything that you can think about, he is into the one world business. And another reason I wanted to bring this message out to you again afresh is because Walid Shubat also is promoting a new thing about a bird that lands on the Turkish Prime Minister's head and the symbology behind that saying that he would be, that this references him to be a great one world leader. And of course, I realize that Walid Shubat, I believe personally, is, is an envoy for the Vatican. His, he's, he's very much tied into the Catholic system. The man cannot stand me because of my stance against what he's doing, but he is pushing the papal agenda, and that is to get the attention off the Pope of Rome and look for you some other world leader. Now, keep in mind, the world leader that is coming, this Antichrist, or this Antichrist, is a religious figure. And everybody keeps saying, you know, well, this Antichrist will bring about a one world religion. He's going to be a, a Muslim, or he's going to be Jewish. There's another one that says that. Well, the Pope of Rome is now considered Jewish because he's been given a seat at King David's tomb, making him a Jewish king. So there's your Jew for you there. For those of you that are looking for a Jewish uh, Antichrist. Uh, but anyway, let's take, let's take a look at the scripture here in the book of Matthew. 
and uh, chapter 24, and using the King, King James Version here, it says here, verse 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Let me back up a little bit here. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. I am the anointed one. See, many shall come. There's been many Pontifus Maximuses that have come since the inception of the Catholic Church in 325 AD, and, uh, and, and they have gone completely off the path of true Christianity and, uh, and, have, and have just really have deceived the world. They've deceived many millions at that, billions, no doubt. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled. See, even the wars and rumors of war, Yeshua said, don't be troubled by that. It's okay. So all these talks about wars and stuff are not something that we really need to concern ourselves with. And we are definitely seeing those. We see in, in other uh, non-canonical writings uh, about the same passages here, which I'll bring that up in a moment for you because I think it's interesting, the wars and rumors of wars. And he says here also, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Well, just recently I saw someone that did, on their website, 5,000 earthquakes in the western United States just happened the other day uh, within a 24-hour period. Now, granted, they're all many of these are just minor earthquakes, but they say that many earthquakes is only showing that a major catastrophic earthquake is on its way. And, uh, and speaking of catastrophes, I mentioned to you recently about the asteroid. I know there's been a lot of concern. Is there going to be an asteroid strike in September? I, I, I want to make sure I, uh, I clarify my stance on that. I personally cannot tell you yes or no. Is there going to be one? Uh, I, I can't really say. I do believe that these are very much tribulation events. Uh, there again, what if this is all leading up to the tribulation beginning in September? I, I, I Even that, I can't say. So I don't want to be in the camp that Brother Steve is prophesying something as far as the asteroid. God has not showed that to me. Uh, you know, my wife did see some catastrophic dreams. Uh, in fact, I was just reading uh, this evening in the book of Enoch, and she does not know this as of yet, but two books I've read in recently, and one of her dreams where she speaks about the angel of the Lord coming down, and he had six wings, and he wrapped his wings around her and she was safe. Well, I actually read that in the very book of Enoch. It says in the latter days at the end when God brings his judgment out, he'll send his angels down to, to gather up those chosen, those elected ones. And so that clearly appears to be what a rapture would be. And uh, as I said recently, I do believe that that rapture takes place at, uh, personally, this is me personally, I believe that it takes place at the ending of the, uh, wit the two witnesses' uh, testimony. That's just my thought on that. Uh, but anyway, we'll go into that a little bit later as well. So anyway, continuing on over here in Matthew, it says many, uh, he says here, uh, excuse me, verse 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Wow. Mm. And you know, it's going to be religious people that deliver you up. It's, it's, not, it's not your, it's not, you know, the government doesn't give a flip about what you believe, but the religious people will deliver you up. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. See, we're seeing the religious side of this. And, and, and there are false prophets all over the land, all over the land. And the people are really beginning to hate one another. I used to see this a lot over the issue of rapture. You'd see, have one brother come out and he have a different opinion, believe it, or a sister that come out and might say the rapture is mid-trib or post-trib or whatever the case, or, or pre-trib. I want it to be pre-trib myself. Quite frankly, that's my preference as well. But the thing is, we have to say with what the Word of God says. And, and therefore, I cannot find it thus, thus far, but he, if, he, if pre trib is coming, I, hey, amen, I'm all for it. Anything to get out of this crazy old world. But the thing is, is the hatred towards people because they have a different opinion or something. Even in, in, in our own stand recently that we've taken showing a more excellent way. Instead of people, you know, saying, well, bless God, if you're able to do that, we appreciate that, you know, but we, we believe that the other way is okay for us. 
Well, that's fine. I have no problem with that, you know, but no, it comes out and the people will turn against you. And my wife even warned me. She says, you'll see that many people will hate you for telling them the truth. And it's true. They do. Just a minority has stood by us, stood with us. And I thank God for that. But anyway, it says, many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the, in, into all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. See, this gospel, this evangelia, as it's written in the, uh, in, in the uh, uh, that happens to be in Matthew's Hebrew gospel there. Uh, he says, this evangelia. Now, let me just, I'll bring that one up to you real quick here. Matthew 24, this is in Matthew's Hebrew version here. Um, he says, uh, let me back up a little bit. It says, in this gospel, yeah, this gospel that is evangelia, he's showing you the Greek form of it, will be preached in all the earth for a witness concerning me to all the nations, and then the end will come. Well, if Pope Francis is coming to set up the New World Agenda, the One World Religion, and to get this whole thing moving here in the United States in September, God has got to rise up a standard against it. And he's going to. That's why I say, your two witnesses are about to come on the scene. And I don't think many people are going to like what they have to say, especially in the Christian community. Those that claim that they're looking forward to the two witnesses coming. Many of them will hate them. In fact, the whole world turns against them, hates them, and will have them stoned and killed right there in Jerusalem. Not, of course, after God has already made sure that they bring forth the ministry that he's intended for them to bring forth, restoring back the word of God the way it should be. See? See? So that's what this gospel is. It will be preached to all the world. It will come and it will be brought about. Now, I wanted to share with you guys something very interesting that I saw here. This, again, this is from what is called the Ascension in chapter 95. I'm not sure which particular book this was. Again, uh, I think this is the Holy Twelve. Uh, again, it's many of these passages here are very much like what we have in the five gospel or four gospels that we have, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, this one here says here, and I have set you as the light of the world and as a city that cannot be hid. This is supposedly the words of Yeshua. But the time, but notice this, you know, even if you don't believe some of these books here, the reason why I'm bringing these things out is I want you to see the prophetic impact that this book has here. Again, I believe this is actually called the Holy Twelve, but I want you to notice, you know, I can't ascribe to everything that is there. I don't have an original to go by myself, or at least I've not been able to find it. I know that there's fragments of this. It is in the Hebrew language, you know, but many people just want to brush it off. You know, we just rather hold to what we got. And nobody cares about anything else. But you know, when, when you got things that are prophetic like this, we need to take a look at it, mainly because you got the Pope of Rome that's coming on the scene and everybody wants to run out here and hold on to, to Wally Shubat's idea of some Muslim guy being your antichrist when there's not a single Muslim. Oh, that, that will be able to do it. But I guarantee you one thing, the Vatican's going to raise you up a Muslim man of Christ so you can fall for this nonsense and believe a lie and be damned by it. So many things. People are being so foolish. That's why he said many false prophets will come. But he said, but the time cometh when darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. And the enemies of truth and righteousness shall rule in my name. You see there, again, a prophecy from Yeshua's mouth quoted in the Holy Twelve, and he says that the enemies of righteousness shall rule in my name, in Christianity, not in a Muslim doctrine, not in some, I mean, my God, people, wake up. Wake up. The Quran. A, a book that should be thrown in the garbage was written by Vatican monks, not by uh, Muhammad. 
And yet you believe this nonsense. You take and use that as your eschatology, quoting a bunch of uh, a Muslim book that is written by a bunch of Catholic monks. And what do they do it for? To kill off those early true Christians. And here you have written right here in the Holy Twelve, the, the words that were ascribed to Jesus said, but the time cometh when darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness of people and the enemies of truth and righteousness shall rule in my name. They will come as quote unquote Christians. My God. And set up a kingdom of this world. They're going to not only rule in his name, but they set up a kingdom. And the Pope of Rome is setting up a kingdom and you're too blind to see it. Many of you, you don't, you don't even pay attention. You're too worried about, oh, Steve's got a green gospel now. You know what? It, it amazes me. The blindness of people. He says, and they'll set up a kingdom of this world and oppress the peoples and cause the enemy to blaspheme. Putting forth for putting for my doctrines the opinions of men and teaching in my name that which I have not taught. It's exactly right. The opinions of men, just like the Pharisees. What did, what, did, what did Yeshua say? It's right here in your own Bible, my Bible here. What did Yeshua say? You, he tells the Pharisees, you teach doctrines, the commandments of men. What doctrines were they teaching, friends? Oh, some people, one person wrote me the other day, a precious brother. Weren't they teaching the Talmud? There was no Talmud at that time. The first Talmud was written 200 years after Yeshua's death. And then the second Talmud was written almost 500 years after Yeshua's death. So what doctrines of man were they teaching that Yeshua called them out on and said you teach doctrines of man? I'll pull it up. I'm going to quote it for you here in just a second here. Because you need to know it. See? You need to know because it's, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, I, I don't want to see anybody lost. I don't want to see people, you know, just wayward. Matthew 15, 9. This is where it's at. And Yeshua says here, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said to them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. What? What, what is it? The words that come out of their mouth is defiling them because they were teaching doctrines of man as the commandments of God. Oh my gosh. My goodness. Mm. You know, think about it, friends. I mean, th this is serious. We are, we are in a very, very, very serious time. Back, back to where we were at here. So to begin with, they're, they're, gross darkness, the people, and the enemies of truth and righteousness shall rule in my name and set up a kingdom of this world and oppress the peoples and cause the enemy to blaspheme, blaspheme, putting from my doctrines the opinions of men and teaching in my name, which I have not taught. See, that's the same, that's the same thing. What we just read in Matthew. See, in Matthew, what was that? Let's go back to it real quick. Matthew 15, but in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandment of men. And what does he say here in the Holy Twelve? See, set up a kingdom in this world and oppress the peoples and cause the enemy to blaspheme, putting for my doctrines the opinions of men and teaching in my name that which I have not taught. See, he's showing how it's going to repeat itself. And that's what I wanted to show you. 
Same thing the Pharisees is. And darkening much that I have taught by their traditions. The Catholic, Church has not, the Catholic Church has done the exact same thing the Pharisees did. Exact same thing. Instead of teaching what Yeshua really taught, Constantine, you know, there, there was, historically speaking, there were 200 different versions of what Yeshua was saying during the time when Constantine, 300 years later, and he brought in all the different scholars and stuff like that, and then he decided to make one Bible only, and he got together with his priests, which many of them were Mithras priests, and they canonized a Bible and put together from the different ideas that they got there, they wrote one. This is one of the reasons why, by the way, you have no fragments of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The only thing that we have close is the Hebrew Matthew we have here. Now, ironically, the Essene Humane Gospel of Yeshua, and, and I have actually been doing a very deep research on this to be able to show you this, but you can clearly see where the, the, the information was compiled together because the words are all there. It's the same thing. It's the same book as what we have in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Many quotations from Matthew, many quotations from uh, the book of John, and many quotations from the book of Luke. Very few from the book of Mark, but mostly from Matthew, Luke, and John is where you get the compilation there. Not to mention, Paul himself quotes directly from the Essene Humane Gospel. Directly, word for word. That that's fascinates me. In fact, the one of his quotations that we have in red that's put in there is not found in any of the four Gospels that we have, but in the Essene Humane Gospel, it's sitting right there, right before your eyes. So, that's why I say, I, I can't verify the authenticity, but I'm saying we got to look at this from the prophetic standpoint. I realize, use caution. You know, we have to use caution in anything that we're looking at because we don't know the authenticity of the translations of the documents unless you're able to read the language. And I've not got to see a Hebrew version of it, although I do understand it was written in Hebrew, but I've not, I've not been able to see that. Many of the fragments that we have today that are being brought forth in other things like from the Dead Sea Scrolls, I can read those and see as well what's being said. But anyway, so what does it go on to say? But, he, but then he says in verse 4 here, But be of good cheer, for the time will also come when the truth they have hidden shall be manifested, and the light shall shine, and the darkness shall pass away, and the true kingdom shall be established, which shall be in the world, but not of it. See, that's going to be your two witnesses. That's when they come on the scene. That's when they will bring out all this nonsense. Notice what he says, And the word of righteousness and love shall go forth from the center, even the holy city of Mount Zion, and the mount which is in the land of Egypt shall be known as an altar of witness unto the Lord. This is why Pope Francis wants to get a hold of Mount Zion. And it's been in recent articles here, they're saying they're going to give all of Mount Zion to the Pope of Rome. Why? They're trying to keep from the two witnesses bringing forth that message from Mount Zion. And what's so interesting was in the dream that God showed me, it was on Mount Zion when he said, there's a man drinking on my holy mountain, just like it's written in Obadiah. And by the way, Mr. Jones, if you ever happen to watch this video, the Pope of Rome has fulfilled the book of Obadiah in the fact when it says that they shall drink upon my holy mountain and shall continually drink down. It was a masculine plural in Hebrew showing that men only would take part in that communion service the first time, which is what happened on the, on, uh, on the, uh, in the upper room there on Mount, Trans, excuse me, on Mount Zion. And, uh, and then the following week, it was, it was gender inclusive, with what, which is clearly what the verse shows in the very next sentence there. So, so many scriptures are being fulfilled. They're, they're making Jerusalem an international city, building checkpoints. The, the huge one on Highway 1 coming up to Jerusalem from the Ben-Gurion Airport. They're going to internationalize Jerusalem. And guess what? You will not be allowed to go into Jerusalem without being checked. That's coming soon. And the Jews are going to be uprooted from Jerusalem and sent out, not all of Jerusalem, 
but in many other places in and around Jerusalem, they'll be taken out and moved to the fields, as Micah prophesied in chapter 4. So he goes on to let us know that, that, that he says, The word of righteousness and love shall go forth from the center, even the holy city of Mount Zion, and the mount of which the land of Egypt shall be known as the altar of the witness unto the Lord. So he's going to rise up. He's going to rise up his word there. Now, let's, let's, uh, in closing here, let me take you uh, back to, this is the Essene gospel here. I have actually broken this down into chapters and verses to make it easier for reference. Um, and also because we're going through here and we're putting together where these things are prophetically from the Old Testament and the New Testament, where the quotations are so you can see them for yourself here. This is in chapter 61, verse 2. Uh, it says, And Yeshua said unto them, Take warning that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name. This is the equivalency of, of, of Matthew 24. I, uh, and, and saying, I am the Christ and the truth. Follow me and be saved, but great shall be the number of the false prophets will deceive, yea, many will take up the holy name in vain and misuse the meaning thereof and cause great confusion among the people and mislead many, for many things shall take place upon the earth that have not taken place before, nay, or seen by any generation except those of that generation. Again, look at the prophetic implications here. He's speaking of that generation. It's the generation we're living in now. And he said they're going to take up the holy name in vain and misuse the meaning meaning thereof. And there's all kinds of opinions on what God's holy name really is. How do you say it? It's this way, that way. And what does it mean? This, it means that, and all kinds of opinions. He, is it not prophetically correct? Sure it is. For you shall hear of great wars and also much talk of war. Many will be threatened with destruction. Is it not true? Those of you that don't want to believe it, is it not true? But be you not troubled, for many things must come to pass before the end of, of, of all evil things. Exactly what's written in our Matthew. Where do they get it from? We have Hebrew documents of this Matthew. Where, where do we have it of our Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John at? Show me, tell me, where is our original? Show me one piece of fragment. In fact, it's like Paul's writings. Paul's writings were found in fragments. When they put together the Bible, Paul's letters were in fragments. Who's the one that filled in between the lines? According to historical documentation, the Catholic priest filled in between the lines for Paul. So what they wanted him to say, they just had him say. My God. Let's drop down to verse 5. In that time of trouble, no creature of God, nay man nor beast, shall escape the cruel judgment of that wicked generation, save mine holy elect, under the charge of mine holy angels. For I say unto you this day that a strange Savior shall rule the minds of many. And that generation shall believe not in the evil uh, shall, shall, excuse me, that evil, that, and that generation shall be not in the evil of the world, but shall judge all evil good and all good evil. My God, it's exactly what I'm watching. I'm witnessing it day to day right now. For many shall be the miracles of the strange God work in the earth. This is your Antichrist. That's who it is. And the people shall worship that Savior with much devotion, for all hope rests in the God that is not a God, but deceiveth the people of every nation. I mean, I mean, are you not looking at Pope Francis? The whole world is deceived by this man. There are literally articles making him the Savior, the peacemaker, the Messiah of today. He's become the world's God. And they think he's the only one that can save the world. You know what's funny? Him and, and, and Pope Benedict, because they're both popes right now. One's a Jesuit pope, a black pope. The other one's a white pope. You remember when Yeshua was on earth, there were two false witnesses that were brought against him. 
They are your two false witnesses today. And what's interesting, they will mimic like true witnesses. Someone wrote me the other day and said, you're preaching just like Pope Francis, Steve. He says to abstain from the meat as well, that we shouldn't kill the animals. This is part of his New World Peace agenda. You know what? False witnesses will be so close like the truth that it will deceive the very elect if it were possible. The true witnesses will come with that same message as well. But you know what? Yeshua says, if you look at Yeshua and what he teaches in the Essene Gospel, he said, live in the country. Don't go live in the cities. Pope Francis is telling you, go live in the cities and don't live in the country because we need to regenerate life. No, they want to bring you into the cities, into the big cities so that they can eventually do with you what they want to do with you. It's one of the reasons why they're killing off all these doctors that are, that are for, uh, recently another doctor was just killed again in the United States. Eight doctors have been murdered in the last, what, 30 days? All of them are natural health doctors. You know why? Like my wife, my wife was doing her doctorate degree in America and then Obama closed the college that she was doing her doctorate degree in. She's already a nurse midwife, like a registered nurse in America, a midwife, delivered many, many babies in her life. And she's studying the natural health as well because she believed in that too. And doctors in Europe contact her for consultation on natural health because they know of her credentials and her knowledge of it. But in America, there's an agenda to kill those doctors. You know why? Because they're speaking out against what the United States is doing in their vaccines. And they're no doubt planning a new thing coming up and they're vocal about it and they gotta shut them up. It's dangerous, very dangerous. The hour you're living in is extremely dangerous. And you're being deceived by this God that's not really a God but the world takes him as their savior. Let's read it again. In that time of trouble, no creature of God, nay man or beast, shall escape the cruel judgment of that wicked generation. The, the generation is the one that is cruel to the man and to the, and to the beast. And we're seeing that with, with ISIS out here beheading the people as if they're cattle. Save mine holy elect under the charge of mine holy angels. There's your rapture. For I say unto you this day that a strange Savior shall rule the minds of many. And that generation shall believe not in the evil of the world, but shall judge all evil good and all good evil. For many shall be the miracles of the strange God work in the earth, and people shall worship that Savior with much devotion. For all hope rests in the God that is not a God, but deceiveth the people of every nation. But the eternal Spirit, the all shall send forth his holy messengers, and they shall restore the holy law anew, which wicked men have hidden by their vain traditions, and those that believe not the holy law shall perish. And in that day shall all they that keepeth my law and commandments be hated of all nations for my name's sake. For many, for many shall be offended at my holy laws and betray one another and shall hate one another. For many false prophets shall indeed arise and shall deceive many. Yea, I tell you, in that age to come, the Father's name shall be blasphemed in a manner like never before in the history of the world, greater than even the star count of heaven itself. What side are you going to be on? We love you guys tremendously. And I've said a lot of things here recently that have offended many. And my wife even warned me, when you speak of these things, many will leave. And many have. Because I've tried to tell you the truth. But I said to my wife, though many might leave, if I don't tell people the truth, I will answer to God for it. I hope you understand. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, your prophetic segment. And keep in mind, the Pope of Rome will come to America. The New World Agenda, New World Order, will take root at that time. All these other predictions of what may happen, tidal waves striking the United States, etc., things of like that, I believe tidal waves will strike the United States eventually. But I can't say it'll be in September. Maybe it will be. I don't know. 
But one thing for sure, in September, starting on the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, the Pope of Rome will make history and the world will admire him and worship him as if he were a god. And yet the church will still be looking for their Muslim Antichrist. Maybe Wally Chubat has finally got him a new one. The Turkish Prime Minister, maybe he now is your Antichrist for those that don't want to believe the truth. You might look there. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening. If you want to stand with this ministry, this news broadcast, show your support. You can do that, IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. We need to know somebody stands with us. If not, we'll still stand for what God's Word truly says with everything that is in us. Shalom. Thank you.